Hi everybody, it's Sam here. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to show you how to make this really pretty pop-up gatefold card. I made this during a Facebook Live with my mum. It was lots of fun and I know lots of you enjoyed watching that one and you've made this card already. So let's get into the video and I'll show you how I made it. So for the main card I've got a piece here of 12 by 6. You want to score at 3, 6 and 9. Okay, And then I've got this piece here but I trim mine down. Now this is just shy of seven inches so it's, I mean six and seven eighths will be fine you then want to score at half an inch at both ends it's just easier that way and then if you just pull the card out slightly so it is got the same kind of gap here that it has here and just score at three and a half just so you've got it kind of roughly through the middle there fold and burnish just do this, uh, burnish these as well. So you want to do a mountain valley, the inner score line, and then finish with a mountain. So I just get that all in place. I just want to show you kind of your options. So this now will sit in here, but it won't be right on the score line. So it means that you can fold, because these score lines, you actually need to burnish them in both directions, but it means it can close up like so when the card's flat or as I showed you can fold it at the back as well okay but that's the shape you want to be working with and then this piece is going to go in there this was two and a half width I'm not sure if I mentioned that but I want to tr bring it down so it will just kind of tuck behind here now I had seen a few people that have shared theirs and they've actually kept it taller and then cut grass into that section which I think I might do actually I might as well keep it and show you another option. Now this little picket fence here is from my Garden Delights Twist and Pop. It is sold out unfortunately. For anybody that's got it is this long die here that I've used. So I've just cut two of them but I think before I do that I'm just going to lay this down in between the kind of score lines for the tabs there and just put a little marker. Um, I'm going to come down just to in line with this kind of first strip there and then I'm going to just cut just roughly that piece away up to my pencil line there and again it doesn't matter if they're not exact it's just a rough just means that that will hide and now what I can do is cut little strips of grass if I don't like it I can just trim it away and I'm just going to use my snips and just cut very thin strips and I'll cut a few different lengths in a minute as well just to make it a little bit more authentic but the thinner you go you'll get that natural curve and it will really look like blades of grass so I'm just gonna whiz through this Okay, so that's now how it looks. I really like it with the grass on the top there. So, so next I want to decorate these panels first before I attach this. So I'm going to do the stripes on each side and then I'm going to have, I think I was going to have the pink this time on the inside and then I'm going to have the yellow on the back so they'll be in like that. These papers are from the Lisa Horton magazine kit so you get stamps, dies and embossing folder and then all the papers are inside. I've used up all of them now apart from I think one sheet and it's the one here with the leaves on it um, but it's yeah it's done really well for some lovely spring Easter kind of makes. So I'm going to stick all these down. These measure two and three quarters by five and three quarters. So again you'll want four, six of them, you might want seven and then keep one plain so you've got somewhere to write your message. Okay, so that's everything stuck down. Next you'll need to cut yourself three strips. They're all half an inch wide, but this one is five inches and you want to score at half an inch and four and a half. And then this one is four inches and you want to score at half an inch and three and a half. And this one is two inches and you want to score at half an inch and one and a half. Next you want to pop a little curve in between the score lines. 
Okay, these score lines we're going to add our glue to. If I show you on this bigger one, it'd be much easier. So you can just fold them out like that, but then you want to add a curve into that bit so it looks like that. You want to do that with all three of them. Okay, and these are our, I guess, bars that we're going to attach everything to. So now I'll grab this piece here and you just want to position it. I'm going to go just below the grass, so kind of in line with where I've cut here. Um, it's entirely up to you as long as it's hidden behind this section here. But I'm going to stick this one just so it's kind of as equal as you can across that middle score line to make sure it's flat as well. So you need to kind of flatten the arch at this point. So just push it down in the middle and then. But then when you open it, can you see how it naturally bows out? So you're just kind of helping it along. So then the next one, pop your glue on the ends there. And again, lay it down right over the top of that one. As equal as you can get it. And then just stick those down. And again, you'll now have the two like that. And then the last one. Everything flat. And you should find that your end tabs will line up with the end of the one below, if that makes sense. The score line, sorry, will line up with the one underneath. Okay, so now we've got our three bars. Next we can attach this inside. So you're going to add your glue on the outside and it's going to go inside here. So again, I'm going to use my quick grab glue. And again, you just want to make sure that that middle score line lines up with the centre of the card and then everything else will kind of fall into place. So, and bring that right down to the bottom and just hold that there for a second. Okay, and now you can see how that looks. Once we've added everything inside, you won't see hardly any of that. It looks really cool. So I've already gone ahead and cut a load of strips. So I've done a few different widths. I've got a quarter of an inch and half an inch. The amount is entirely up to you. It depends how many things you're putting inside. The lengths of these I have got, they're all going to be trimmed down, but they are five inches. Okay, so get yourself as many as you want. You might want to use acetate as well. On a lot of the pop-up boxes that I've done, I've used acetate. It makes everything look like it's floating. But I've done the green, so it looks like the stems of the flowers, but you can see there, you hardly see them. So it's going to become very full. So all of these flowers here are from the Paper Craft Society kit and it was the Linda Parker one. I've used the flowers a lot and it was, you can see this die set here. So you can see the ones that I've used. And I also took the, you know, I took the dragonfly from my Garden Delight set along with the butterfly. So you can see the dragonfly there and the butterfly. The bunting was also from the magazine kit and these were from an old paper that I had. But in here I've got the butterfly, the dragonfly and I've used Colin the caterpillar there as well. And then for the little hopping bunny this is an old crafty impressions from Spring, Spring Fun 2017. So I just heat embossed that. And the leaves are from that kit as well the Linda Parker one. The enamel dots, these are from the magazine kit. So I'm going to pop them in the centres of the flowers once I've stuck them all down. And then I've got my sentiment which I've already popped on some acetate and that's what's going to go on the very front and I'll show you that when we get to it but you'll see how that just pops up then from the grass. So I'm going to get these all on their strips just with a little bit of glue and then um, I'll show you how I position a few of them and then I'll get the rest stuck down. Okay, so I'm going to bring this one in here because I am going to follow that one again in terms of the positioning because I've got the three larger kind of flowers at the back and then all the rest um, coming towards the front. So I'm going to slide it in. I'm not going to put the glue on yet. I'll just slide it in so it's on the top of that biggest one and then just kind of hold it where you think you'll need it and just pinch your finger up to where you've got the overhang. So I'm just going to pinch there and then I know... I can snip that much away because that's where I pinched up to and then if you're using acetate then I would recommend using red tape to stick this onto this piece here but I'm now going to actually I'm going to go behind that one I know I said I put it on top but I want to stick it to that one so I'm going to go right behind kind of fill it in that space where it needs to be and then I'm just going to push that down 
for now and just see a little bit of it sticking out there. If I turn it that way, there we go. You can see it's stuck behind that bar there. And then it will stand up. You see how it, once it's all put, you know, popped into shape, it kind of does hold itself up. And then I'm going to get the next one. So let's do, so I've got the yellow, yes, yeah, so I'll do the blue. So again, I'm going to go right behind, sorry, not on top, like I said before. And that one's going to feel, kind of be in the same place. So we kind of keep it flat. And then, so again, just pinching up to where the overhang is. Which is why I said you, you do end up trimming most of these down. But by keeping it at the five inches, it's just easy to when you trim them when you're cutting them all. Just make sure you don't get any glue anywhere else apart from on the bars. So now you can see those ones there. And then I'm going to pop the yellow one in the middle. And then I'm going to come forward onto the next bar. And like I said, well, between this bar and the middle bar, I will stick all these flowers. The front one is just for my sentiment. But you could also add another bar in if you want. There's no reason why you can't. So, yeah, that's what you need to do. So I'm going to go and get all of this stuck down. So that is most of the things stuck down. I've popped the flat back, there are the enamel dots in the centre of the flowers and I've added all the leaves there as well. I think it looks really nice. I've also added some bunting and the butterfly and the bunny. Oh, and Colin the caterpillar there as well. Caterpillar. And then I've just popped some red tape on the end of my acetate. I'd already measured where I need it to go and I'm just popping it on the outside. I'll just push that down in there and then let it kind of pop back out again but if you can just see it in there there we go it's just stuck behind it but that is everything and then I'm just going to pop my dragonfly might have the dragonfly on here this time so I had the the butterfly there before just pop him down and it all folds up that way much better okay because I just brought in the sides of this piece so you don't have that bolt but if you don't want it that way you can have it that way so they take it out of the envelope or box envelope and I'll link that up here because these are obviously got a bit of dimension but either way because of the way we folded it and how everything's stuck it naturally goes into that position I think it looks beautiful perfect for any occasion see this is Easter but just a nice spring birthday Christmas with lots of snowflakes all inside I think that would be lovely or poinsettia or Christmas flowers they would look really nice as well so that's my finished pop-up gatefold card 
I think it's turned out really well. Definitely be making this style again. Try some different sizes and some different themes. Thank you for all the ones you've been sharing already over on the group Mixed Up Crafters on Facebook. They are fantastic. And it's the one, I can't remember, the couple of you I think done the grass along the top. And I just thought, yeah, give it a go. And I think it's turned out really well. So thank you. And that's what the group's all about. We do inspire each other and it's just a lovely place. So if you do want to share anything that you've made following my tutorials, head over there. And uh, yeah, it's just a nice little community. There will also be some other tutorials popping up now that you might want to watch next and if you've enjoyed today's tutorial and you're not subscribed please hit the subscribe button hit the notification bell and then you'll be notified every time I upload a new video thanks for watching and I'll be back again soon bye